go to opencv.org, the new website of OpenCV Library. And over here you can see that they have now updated to a pretty good layout and design of their website and you can see various content uh, in a very good format. So uh, you might want to check out the whole page, see what's where, and especially if you're a newbie, you might want to check out the documentation uh, option with uh, the reference and books and tutorials and everything. But, and you can see that which platforms are, uh, are supported and you can have all the information over here. Now, as you can see on this corner, the latest version 2.4.4 is out and it's available for uh, these platforms. And since I'm going to be following Windows, uh, installation of Windows, so we're going to install this version. Now you can go for the previous versions or any other version on the previous versions of OpenCV and that you can do by clicking the downloads button and they have a list available of all their previous um, uh, installers or zip folders of the library as well. As you can see the versions as you go down the versions get older and you can download and install any of these but uh, just remember that with every new release every new version uh, the implementation changes a bit in the functions so all of them uh, what I mean is you might not be able to follow the tutorial for different versions of OpenCV library because it so happens that they also change the way the installation works on the versions and which is quite a trouble actually people have complained about it and even I was stuck a lot and I took probably two days 48 hours almost to figure out things so that's why I'm here to make it simple for you now enough of the blabbering now uh, let's just get on with the download so just click open CV for Windows on the latest version and it will take you to their source forge page where they have their executable or their uh, library uploads uh, the download you can see that name of the executable file will be something like this and it will be 259.48 MB now that's a pretty big size they've been increasing the size however just download it bear with it and when you have downloaded it then we'll see what is actually included in these files and how to install and everything now wherever you have downloaded your opencv 2.4.4.exe or whatever version you're downloading and installing just double click it and it will give you this uh, interface now it's asking you where to extract to so we are going to simply extract to C as it is and start the extraction now this could take up up to as you can see uh, five to six minutes so meanwhile that happens uh, let's wait okay I think it's completed let's see opening C drive and yes this is the folder that just got extracted let's check it out okay so it's got all these folders and um, we'll have a look at what's inside these folders but first we're going to rename it rename it to open CV space 2.4.4 okay now that we have extracted our OpenCV folder and we have renamed it to OpenCV space 2.4.4, we'll check out what are the contents of this folder and we'll see which are the important contents that we actually need when we build our projects on Visual Studio and uh, which, uh, which exact things or files are that our code will be using and they should be present where they're supposed to be. So it's got a lot of uh, folders and the directory that is the structure of uh, their directory keeps on changing from version to version or at least in the past few versions. So now there is third party Android, uh, iOS include and platforms and sample samples and doc data. So they've got various folders so uh, depends on which sort of application you're developing since we'll be using simple uh, pre-built libraries for Win32 applications developed in C++ on Visual Studio so we'll be using the build folder only I think so we'll open it and we'll check it out what is inside now include has all the headers 
that your code is going to access to use OpenCV functions. So remember that this is the folder, this is the directory, uh, this that you need to remember to let your project know where the definitions of OpenCV functions is present, is located on your hard drive. Then we'll check out what is in the 64-bit uh, and the 32-bit uh, folders. Now, 64-bit has further folders, which is VC9, uh, MingW, VC10, VC11. I think these are uh, just the various versions of the binaries that we are supposed to use in our project, depending totally upon our project and the target platform. So if you're developing 64-bit application, then you're going to have to use the folders and the files in this directory. I will be using VC10 because uh, I think this is going to be most compatible with Visual Studio 2010. I've tried VC11 too and that's compatible as well, but we're going to stick to VC10. And in VC10 we have further folders, the exact folders that are of need. One is the bin folder. This is all the dynamic, uh, dynamic link library files, I think so .dll. And these files are actually uh, called at runtime from your code if you are accessing any function who is uh, using these, uh, any function, uh, your call in the function which is using these files, the functionality in these files. Then we have a library func uh, library folder and in the library folder there are .lib files that your project is also going to use these. So you really want to uh, remember this path uh, that you're going to be including in your project when you're going to configure a Visual Studio project. So, so far we have three folders of importance. One, the binaries, DLL files, the library files, and the header files. So, as is evident, the uh, build folder is the most important one for us. The data folder is also important if you are uh, going to use the XMLs present, for example, for object detection such as face detection or eye detection. And there is another important uh, folder called the samples. This has example CPP code, so you can just browse and check it out once you've uh, configured your uh, first pro Microsoft Visual Studio project. You can check out all of the code, what it does. So it's a pretty helpful folder for you. Well, now we're going to make a code, a project that is going to call the basic functionality of OpenCV, for example, loading and showing an image. So we'll head off and make our first application.